Hello again and welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Chiropractor. It's your host Patrick Hogg and we've got a super special guest here with us today. Uh, so I actually uh, met this gentleman at a, uh, we, met, we met at CE I believe uh, a couple of years ago. He was actually, he was a friend of, uh, or he worked in the same clinic as one of my friends that I graduated from school from. They were both working in the same practice. Uh, in the last few years, he's just like uh, he's he was still working as an associate. I think it was about three or four years ago he was still working. As an yeah, because he's new ed, wasn't it? Yeah. So three or four years ago, he was working as an associate. He was working for someone else, and in those four years, he's actually bought himself two practices. <laughs> so he he hasn't gone half heartedly. He's gone two practices. Uh, he he is a Weok student, so he graduated from the school in Cardiff. Uh, he. He is a very principled based chiropractor. So one thing that I really want to acknowledge Phil for is that over the last, uh, over the last period, whilst the lockdown actually occurred, Phil actually set himself a challenge to do uh, burpees every single day. And with that, he explained to every single one of his patients, one of the 33 principles of chiropractic. And so what we're going to basically do today, we're going to, we're going to try and learn a little bit more about Phil uh, he's going to tell us a little bit more about himself, how he's started to build his practices, how he looks after himself. But we're actually going to go a little bit deeper into the philosophy of chiropractic because there are 33 principles that the initial chiropractors built the profession on. And this guy is actually living and speaking the message with his patients right now. And we wanted to be able to share that with our listeners today. So I'm going to introduce you today, uh, not not any relate, way related to EastEnders, but it is... <laughs> Phil Mitchell. <laughs> Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you. Don't, don't ask me to repeat all 33 principles. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no chance. I think we'll be here all day because they, they're, they're, not, they're not short principles. They don't write them in the most concise way, do they? <laughs> uh, and when you go through them, you realise that they were written in you know, 1920s language. So it's, uh, it takes a while to get, get your head around them. And decipher them. I, I love what I love reading some of the the, the green books, so some of the Palmer books, yeah. and uh, and then I'm reading it in, and and seeing all the dies and vowels and stuff like they. It's almost like it's almost written biblically. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Fred Barge ones because he kind of explains them all as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, look, just to explain a little bit more about yourself, because I know I would have done you a little bit of a disservice. I'm, I may have bigged up certain areas, but there may be some other bits that you you want people to know, but. Just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit more about yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about why you got into chiropractic and how you got into chiropractic. Yeah, sure, I mean, there's a very, um, very kind introduction, thank you. I, I would say I'm trying to be very principled. Um, it's a challenge, it's a journey as we go all along. Uh, I've been a chiropractor for 14 years, 14, yeah, 14 years now, as you said. It's um, been that good what, that you can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> time flies, isn't it? But um, uh, so yeah, I've got two practices. Uh, we're here in Crawley and Hawley. Uh, I took over Crawley practice 2017 uh, and then just last year took over the Hawley practice. Um, I've got three young kids who are an uh, amazing wife. Uh, life's pretty good. So we live in a nice part of the nice part of the world down here in Sussex. Um, just down the road to me. <laughs> not too far. <laughs> You're down on the beach which is nice. Uh, so, but, you um, still get the downs near you guys though. Oh yeah we found some nice walks locally as well during this time so it's uh, Mm. So it's a nice part of the country. It's nice to be close to the beach and, and close to London. You know, so we are very blessed. We're very lucky. And um, we live in a nice little village. So the kids yeah. can get out onto the green and go for walks and things. So um, just, t just tell us, just tell us a little bit about how you, how you became a chiropractor. Yeah, so I say life's very good at the moment. But um, as a child, I struggled a lot with allergies, with asthma. Um, I was painfully shy as a child. And um, when I was about 30, I used to love football. So football was my escape. I played, I like to think I was quite good at football. I played quite well. Um, I had a bit of time with my local team, Bristol City. But when I was uh, about 13, I started getting pain in my knee. Right. Um, now my dad's a doctor. He's a, 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 general, practic um, a general practitioner. Um, and he kind of inspired me in terms of going into helping people. Um, he's, I'm very proud of him as, as a doctor. He's certainly one of the cleverest men I know. Um, and he sort of thinks a bit more alternatively, shall we say, as a doctor. So he's always sent people to a chiropractor when they've presented with back pain or neck pain. Um, so when I hurt my knee, he sent me to a physio, as, as, as most GPs do. 
uh, he did ultrasound, did some massage, gave me some exercises. The knee pain got a little bit better. But every time I went out to run, I went to kick a football, I'd still get pain in my knee. Um, so I had to stop playing, which was, you know, it was my whole world, kicking the ball in the garden, playing football with friends and, and matches. things. So he, he sent me then to the chiropractor he knew. And the chiropractor looked at me and said, well, Phil, you've got a pain in your knee, but you don't really have a problem in your knee. The problem is your back and your pelvis. So it's all twisted out of alignment and was affecting the nerve and the muscles down to the knee. So um, thankfully, with some sessions with the chiropractor, um, he got me back on track and we're playing football again. Amazing. Uh, made, it to the, made it to the final that we played that year, although we did lose. It's still, still uh, great a bit. Um, and then, but actually, <clears throat> from that point, I don't, I don't know if it's just looking back and, and sometimes maybe you look back and things and you, you can see what you don't see at the time. But I can see that, that from there, things started to improve. It, it really inspired me to, to go and be a chiropractor. But what I'd noticed was that you know, asthma improved greatly. Allergies went away. I still get the occasional sniffle. But generally, um, my health started to improve. And also, I do think my confidence started to improve as well. I kind of opened up a bit. Can look through life going through then, you know, going through school and college and into university. I was still quite shy, I didn't speak, but it just grows and it grows. And, and if you keep working on things, so that, that got me into chiropractic. So I went straight from college, straight to Weok. Uh, I spent five years at Weok, um, got all the basic training, you know, you get a very good level of basic training and skills. But when I came out, I did not really know what chiropractic was. I also remember one of my first interviews, the guy, I mean, he must have cried as I left. He asked me what a subluxation was. And, you know, I couldn't give a proper answer. I didn't have a true... That's, that's, not, really that's not your fault, right? Because the, <laughs> oh, yeah, so. the schools aren't really teaching these principles that we're going to discuss yeah. today. It's not, it's not that they, they don't encourage you to, like, look at it. Uh, you know, you've got... And this is the thing, you've got a massive spectrum of chiropractors. Uh, you've got yeah. those people that are very MSK and will work very much like a physio, which is equally fine. Is and fine. then you've got which chiropractors is... that you are, are very principally based and they're looking at the principles. So uh, very much like, yeah, your, yeah. Your, like your chiropractor did back in the day when mm -hmm. you were 13, because obviously you had all the physio work, physio work wasn't working. So you needed to look at something in a slightly different way. Your body yeah. still had that ability to heal. It just needed the right push in the right direction. Yeah. You had to take the interference away. I did, but at university, the opportunity was there. I mean, there were other people that, that perhaps would have learned more about the philosophy side of things, but I was very much, even though I had a lot of change from chiropractic, it was still a pain-based viewpoint. I was going to say, interestingly, like, so <coughs> your chiropractor when you were younger, was he a very wellness-based chiropractor then? Well, not particularly. Not particularly. I think he was no. in the middle of the ground, probably. He did have... Right. Um, the viewpoint that chiropractor was bigger than just pain, but it wasn't like he changed my mindset in that sense. I mean, okay, interesting. I had, a interesting. Cup, I had, I had two or three chiropractors at the time. Right, right, right. And did and did you did he recommend like a, a like a maintenance based thing even when you were when you were a kid? So did you start seeing these health changes when you started uh, getting chiropractic care when you were younger? Did you start noticing them over a short period of time, or were you seeing them for quite a while? I think it happened over time. Definitely. I mean, my mum was actually. Um, I actually worked in the chiropractic clinic and ended up managing it mm -hmm. for a period of time. So I, I, I don't remember. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't remember necessarily that much of being right. You, you need to do the maintenance. You need to look after it. But I remember I just I did, did go back and but sometimes mm -hmm. it was things because I sprained my ankle or you know I had a football mm -hmm. injury. But it was mm -hmm. I was kind of having some sort of care. I think over that Come time. care over time. Some sort of care. And that's the thing is it like I, I find this with patients a lot that like, people get themselves into such a state that like they just get to a point where they just want to get out of that baseline level a lot of the time and then they stop, but they never see what's beyond. Yeah. Never see what's beyond that. And so and the thing is is when someone's got to a point where they're really that bad that they've got those symptoms, a lot of the time there's so many other things that have kind of led them to that if they actually continue that journey and start taking some of the, the measures and the steps that we're going to talk about today, uh, they'll actually see much bigger picture than just that. Oh, my knee pain's gone away now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, I could have stopped at that point and I'm sure it would have been okay, but you know, the changes come often when the initial problem goes away, doesn't it? 
It's normally the that, big change. That's when the big change is. Kind of happen. second phase, you know, where you're actually holding the adjustments and mm-hmm. giving that mm-hmm. chance to heal. Properly heal, properly heal. And you like it's it's like so many of our patients that will come in. They come in with a particular issue, and you know you'll go through a six week program. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the time initially or a four week program with someone initially where you go go quite intensive and you know you have people that come in with a back problem and they never mention that they've got a knee or a hip or a shoulder or a, a, a like a sciatica with it they just think oh chiropractor back and neck pain cool. go and see him for back and neck pain oh that's how long it's going to take to get rid of my back and neck pain all of a sudden they're walking back in and you know you see their progress forms and they're like, oh, my knee pain's got better, my digestion's improved, yeah. my sleep is oh. better. And you just, and then you're going, oh, so you've seen all these improvements. And they're like, yeah, I wasn't, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's <laughs> something that, that I'm doing that or you're doing. <laughs> and it, yeah, it, and this, is, this is a conversation we as chiropractors have. <clears> oh, I don't know whether it's something that you did, but yeah. that's a sentence you hear in your that, office all the I time. A, I had it yesterday, a lady who um, hadn't had a period since February. I was like, oh, I've come on. Uh, I don't know if it's related or not, or you know, I, you know, who who knows? But we're adjusting your spine. That's affecting those nerves. You know. Do you know what? You're about the third or fourth chiropractor that's had that. I had a chiropractor tell me the same kind of story um, when I first started, when I first graduated. Who she hadn't had. She hadn't had a period in something like five years. She yeah. thought she'd gone through early menopause, and within six weeks, because uh, they want they wanted to have kids, but they they was they were thinking of going IV. And then all of a sudden, this just changed their whole perspective on what was possible, what was possible. And these are those little moments through your career that actually start to switch you on. So I remember a lady when I was probably in my second year, who came in one day and said, I've been carrying these um, tablets around because every month I had horrendous um, period pains in my back. And now they've gone. And I, I don't need them anymore. Like, <clears throat> all right, okay, so it starts to switch you on a bit. So like, all right. Maybe we're doing a bit more than just helping your back pain. And this is the thing. We ne- and, and by the way, neither me or Phil are basically saying that we treat these things. Yeah. We're just, we're merely observing some of the changes that occur when people are in our offices. Because obviously what we've got to be aware of is that the advertising agency will say that these things are not necessarily treatable by chiropractic. But what we know is when people's bodies actually start to function better, some of these things start to change. So, I mean, I know I, I had a patient that was allergic to cats and she was, she's not allergic to cats anymore. Yeah. And it's just like one of those things. And the only thing that she can link it to is she started, and it was literally like an on off switch. She was, ha- she was having allergies. She came and had chiropractic care. Her allergies pretty yeah. much stopped like Maybe. within the first six weeks. And so we, we can't say that we necessarily treat these things, but, if they happen and we're adjusting the nerve system and we know that that nerve system is starting yes. to function better yeah. and their body is reacting better to the environment, then all of a sudden we start yeah. to see sometimes changes that we can't always, always explain hundred percent easily. That is the thing is that we're not treating anything. <clears throat> we're not giving treatments for this. We are adjusting the spine, reducing inflammation, irritation. And it just so happens that the normal case is that the person has done nothing else different. The only thing that's changed in their life is they start getting adjusted. Mm-hmm. So it's not a big scientific study, but when it keeps happening, it makes you realise that there is something more than, than just. And, and the thing is, this isn't just a phenomenon that occurs in chiropractic. This happens with stuff like uh, massage and osteopathy and all these other things. You know, we see these phenomena happen, it's, but it's when the body is actually functioning better and we actually start seeing, seeing some actual really yeah. cool changes in the body. Yeah, yeah. So cool. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pivot off a little bit. So one one of the things that I wanted to really talk about. So the, the reason why I wanted to talk about this with, uh, with with Phil is that because of his burpee challenge, he has he has gone back and he's studied the 33 <coughs> principles of chiropractic. Now, like we said earlier, it's uh it's one of those things. It's a bit of a thy thou like 70s written uh for basically philosophy. Well, it's in fact it's even earlier because it was when was it, when they were written? They were in 1800s. In yeah, the twenties and thirties. So, yeah, but um, Stevens put his principles together because because obviously chiropractic's what hundred it was one hundred and twenty five years last year. I got that right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. and so obviously the the, the, the terminology is quite old and deciphering it and being able to obviously translate it for people we like easily to digest. But maybe you can just highlight. So we've got thirty three principles. Maybe you can highlight mm-hmm. some of your favorite principles in terminology that people can basically understand. I mean, the, uh, I mean, these guys were way ahead of their time, really. I mean, the, I just love the, uh, the art, overarching theme, if we go into that, is that, that there's universal intelligence, innate intelligence, 
that if you look in nature, it's, you know, nature just happens. There's nothing trying or struggling. You know, the grass grows, the seasons change, the birds migrate. And they took that and they recognised that. And then they recognised that inside of us, obviously, is that, you've got that innate intelligence that's controlling it, that we're releasing, essentially. You know, if you cut yourself, it heals. If you eat some food, it digests. We don't have to think about these things. It's all just happening naturally through our nervous system. And as long as we're looking after ourselves and keeping clear interference, then we have the chance to be healthy, 100% healthy, as they call it, looking at 100% function. So I know that they talk about all that, like matter and the intelligence. But it's just within living things, there is a, a there's something bigger than the sum of the parts in that sense. You know, there's, there's like well, that's, inborn you know, intelligence. It's really interesting. You should obviously say that about the matter um and then obviously the universal intelligence or the innate intelligence because obviously if you look at a tree and you look at a wooden chair they're made of the same exactly. they're yeah. made of the same chemical compounds yeah. exactly the same like the only difference between obviously a chair and a tree that there'll probably be slightly more water in a tree because it's alive yeah, but yeah. The, the the thing is right is that the chemical compounds are there you know what's the difference what's the difference what makes one a living organism versus one being an inanimate object because yeah. they're both made of the same the exactly, yeah. and the thing is you can't bring that chair back to life now like it's done yeah that's it's, it's, i don't think many of us really take the time to think about that you know what is it that makes us alive what is it that makes that tree alive or makes that bird alive but is that's in in all of us and that's a it's a very powerful concept when you actually understand that there's something inside us that is working always on the job working to keep us functioning at 100 mm-hmm. percent it can give you especially at times like this and it gives you that can give you that confidence that mm. we don't need to worry about everything you know our body's on the job the body, um, the body is on the job i love it i love it but one of the i think one of my one of the favorite principles is the principle of time yeah it's quite a simple it's quite a simple one like, <clears throat> there is not a process that does not require time these days everything happens like we want everything now, you know, I still remember going to Blockbusters to get a video out. And now it's all on the TV downstairs and, and you know, the kids can grab the remote and stick whatever they want on, you know. Everything happens Instant straight Instant gratification. And, and life's not like, you know, if you want to lose weight, if you want to get fit, if you want to build some muscle, if you want to heal and get healthy, it does take time. Mm. It's probably one of the hardest things to get across to people. It's yeah. just got to give yourself time sometimes. Well, the, I mean, the marketplace is set up for instant gratification, isn't it? Like... Uh, getting getting abs in 30 days uh lose this much weight for your for your for your wedding blah 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 but it's all it's all quick fixes it's all quick fixes and what we basically know about quick fixes or quick fix diets or quick fix routines is okay they might be great and you might lose all that weight but the likelihood is is they're not sustainable Mm. they're not sustainable like crashing and eating like just a hundred percent if you're going from a really high carb diet and all of a sudden all you do is the atkins diet and you just all you eat is like high fat your body is going to react very differently because you you're 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 actually stressing it out you're actually trying you're going to produce certain hormones so it, you might see that initial weight loss but like i say your body's going to crash and you're going to have that unsustainable you're probably going to cause stuff like acidosis and stuff yeah. into the body so you get this really like high acid in your blood levels because you're just not your body's not used to that that rapid change and you like you say it takes time to heal um i think i remember reading a journal that like the discs in the low back uh they because they haven't got a direct blood supply they can take anywhere from a year to two years Mm. from a disc prolapse to properly stabilize yeah you know and 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 like one of the fastest things and this is you know people obviously uh, who've had injuries and broken bones in the past, they'll, they'll obviously know this, is that you're in a cast for six weeks. Yeah. That's quick. Like As far as the body healing is concerned, bones heal really quickly yeah. in comparison to a lot of other tissues. And even that's a long time for someone, yes. Yeah, What's that? Even that's a long time. Is it? Oh, four to six weeks, I think it seems like, like an age, but that, like you say, it's quick healing. Really. That's really quick. And, and, the, and the thing is, is bones, bones have a really good direct blood supply because obviously we get a lot of our new blood cells, a lot of our new blood cells from, from our bones. So obviously we have, to get the, we have to get the blood in and out of it so that we can actually produce. So the stem cells, the stem cells to reproduce new tissues, guess what? They're in exactly the place that you've just broken. <laughs> So it's going to be the fastest place. So all of these other tissues, we've got to understand, they might not be as quick. They might not be as quick. 
Okay, so it's really interesting. So obviously you, you love living uh, by these principles, but maybe maybe you could uh, teach people something quickly so that they can start to live a more principled life and live a little bit more in alignment with maybe the way that the chiropractic principles actually work. Yeah, um, I think it, the first thing is just the, just awareness. Mm -hmm. I would just take that awareness that there is intelligence in the world. As much as it seems crazy, especially at the moment, you know, <laughs> it, you know there is intelligence. And the, the world, there is a, a design and intelligence in the world. And just to, to pay attention to it, you know. They say, you know, just a walk in nature is one of the best things you can do. We know it helps with anxiety and depression. And just go and walk. And I, I love going out with the kids because they just notice everything. Mm -hmm. All the little bugs. And you have to stop mm -hmm. them for 10 minutes whilst they look at ants crossing the road. You know, they find worms, they look at birds, and it's just pay attention to that, first of all. It'd be great to be, be that curious again, right? Oh, it'd be amazing. Yeah. Like, come on, we've, come on, we've got, you have to remember, no, actually, no, let's look at those ants, let's study, let's see, and they are amazing. How, how does, I always remember, I used to, it used to um, in our old house, we had a garage that was attached away from the house, and there was a little drive up to the main road. I used to take spiders out of the garage, and I'm ever so kind, I used to just take them out and put them on the main road, which was maybe 50... 50 foot away, I don't know, but, mm -hmm. but, but and then I'd, I'd sat and watched them and they'd walk all the way back to the garage again. You're like, how do they even know where they're going? Yeah, I do. What David, just, there is David so much intelligence in the world. David Attenborough does a like a he shows you an experiment, I think it's with a dung beetle, it's with a dung beetle, where yeah. he has them on a platform and they're they're rolling their dung and he turns the platform and even as he's turning the platform, the insect can still correct the direction that they're going in. So like, it's almost, he's turning this platform, it's almost like they haven't pivoted at all. Yeah. It's not like, it's not like they go off and course correct, they literally pivot as he's turning. And it's just like, apparently they follow the, like, the, the, the magnetic fields of the yeah. moon. We don't, we don't know, we don't know, but this is what they, they believe. And again, it just yeah. shows you, just how much order and intelligence i mean like people I mean, you I wait. Think humans are the pretty pretty much the only species on the planet that cheat that cheat intelligence <laughs> like we we force intelligence to kind of right. suit us we, not the other way we, around they kind of ignore it don't they <clears throat> yeah yeah for I sure. think when, you, when you start to just pay attention to that it can just get you out of the moment you know it's very easy to be stuck in your moment your problems mm -hmm. your issues mm -hmm. but as soon as you get out of it mm -hmm. then yeah. you can actually see there is there is some beauty around it and then um just try and do something every day that takes you towards that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple things like exercising every day. Yeah. Um, we love doing gratitudes. Mm. And I'm sure you've done some meditation this morning. You know, those little things. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to turn into a, a, a Buddhist monk suddenly, but just taking five, ten minutes every day and just spending some time where you're just at peace or you're just in the moment. And then every morning, every night, do something to write down gratitude, write down your wins. Um, obviously, exercise mm -hmm. every day. A very simple thing that we tell all our patients is make sure you're drinking enough water. Mm -hmm. So many people, mm -hmm. we tell them to drink water, they drink water and then they, they, they thank us for it because they don't even realise how dehydrated they are. Well, I think I think even if you're just at a 20% like dehydration rate, um, you know, I think you can actually, uh, there was a study, you can reduce your lower back pain by 20% just by drinking more water. Like there was a 20% improvement in patients yeah. just by drinking more water. And the thing is, is again, if you just look at what your body's made of, it's 70% water or 75% water, depending on how old you are. Um, but your discs are mainly water. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got no water going in, your body's going to try and yeah. find it. And the thing is, is it your body, it, the intelligence of your body is that it will start shifting stuff around to the place that needs it the most. So if you've only got a liter and a half and your yeah. body and your body needed if your body needed three liters and you've only got a liter and a half, it's got to try and distribute that and it's going to prioritize. It's going to prioritize what keeps you alive. Our body is designed to survive. Yeah. It's one of the great points from the principles as well, is that your intelligence is always working at hundred percent for your greater good. It may not always feel like that. Like the, the person who's you know leaching calcium from their bones and because they need calcium in their blood. And they're getting osteoporosis. It sounds crazy, but it's for your greater good. You know, like you say, they, you know, they're going to take water from where it needs it because that is what's 
inherent for your survival and your function. It's really interesting. Like obviously the conversation that we're having, you can see like the pivots in what we're, we're talking about. So you've talked about meditation. So looking after your mental health, you've talked about stuff like water and eating well and you know, the nutrients that are in your body and where they're going to go around. So we're talking about the chemical processes in our body. And then we've talked about stuff like the injuries, the back pain, the blood flow. The, and we're talking about the physical. And again, this is like the main thing that the pin, principles were all developed on is that physical, chemical, emotional changes, those three levels of stress, those three arms of stress that in chiropractic, they call it the three T's, thoughts, toxicity, yeah. and trauma. Uh, these are the three T's that can both be leveraged to cause or correct cause or yeah. correct like the thing is is that you can use those same three things you can reduce the amount of stress on your body and do things that are going to improve or you can increase the amount of stress and not do the things that yeah. are going to improve and that's really how you shift from one end of the spectrum to unhealthy or to healthy yeah i think people think that i don't know sometimes the challenge is it, it, it feels too big a hurdle you know like people think you know how could i ever change but it's taking small steps and it was that that um, I can't remember who it was by that quote about a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Hundred you know, percent. And even just I think there was a study in, in America that, that showed even just um, increasing your vegetable intake by one a week and walking for like twenty minutes would start to reduce your blood pressure. Yeah. But it doesn't take a big effort. It's, it's just starting and being consistent and consistent and consistent, and then the small changes build over time. I was going to say like that. It's really interesting you said that. I think um, I think someone speculated that they basically did a study and showed you all the improvements you got from thirty minutes of walking a day. Yeah. And essentially, essentially, if the pharmaceutical <clears throat> companies, if the pharmaceutical companies could replicate a pill that did thirty minutes of walking yeah. a day, they would have a pill that would be the most effective for treating the most uh, most conditions on the planet ever. Done. Period. Like. Yeah that pharmaceutical company would basically be filling bowls of pills so fast, they'd run out of bowls. Yeah. Fast. And <laughs> people would take it because I just want to, you know, I think that's one thing my, my dad's said to me in the past is that, he, you know, for a lot of people, they just want the pill. Mm. You, know, mm -hmm. you can talk to them about lifestyle, dietary changes, but a lot of people just, oh, well, you know, I'll take that. Yeah. And we forget that unlike exercise, every single drug has got a side effect. That's the thing. And that's the, the you know, that's the great thing about living in a living in a way which is more natural and more in the kind of the alignment of chiropractic because there aren't any side effects. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. biggest side effect that we've basically um, observed in chiropractic is like increased soreness, which if you've really got inflammation and swelling in the body, you move the joint. There's a potential that, 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 you know, that, that scar tissue and stuff that's built up in those areas that you've let get dysfunctional for a long time, they're going to get sore. Sometimes you have to get worse to get better. Yeah. <laughs> really, most, really cool. Most things have been there for years. Yeah, for years. Yeah. If you go to the gym, you're not been to the gym for years, you're going to hurt the day after, aren't you? <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, really interesting, really interesting. Um, look, I, I understand that I've got to be uh, conscious of people's time. And I know that you've got kids because I've heard them in the background. They're, they're probably starting to rise now. Uh, so let's, let's just uh, let's ask a couple of other questions and then I'll let you get on with your day. Cool. So one of, the, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was uh, many of us make quite big mistakes in our careers or development and maybe there was something that you did back in the past where you kind of went, Oh, I really wish, I wish that someone had told me this. Uh, so I, I tend to say university, but it could be at any point in your career. <laughs> so if you could jump back five, 10, <clears throat> 20 years and go back to, to, mm. to fill in the past and say, do you know what? I really feel like you should have, should have done this. Uh, what would it be? Mm. Yeah, I'll take two if that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> this is cheating but yeah okay there's, there's, probably, there's probably more but uh, so the university just uh, just spend more time doing what you're studying you know i think that's what i, I just didn't dive deep i did what i had to uh, i didn't dive and i'm quite envious of all the students now that are getting into um, you know some of the training that you see some of the coaching and things that they're starting really early 
like yourself, Patrick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I was just sat there thinking, going, oh, is he trying to ping it at me there? <laughs> oh, you know, what, what are you, four years in and you're, you're doing all this great stuff, so, you know. Yeah. Um, so I would just, when I, when I was at uni, I would tell myself, stop hanging around with those mates who are doing other courses and, and just go and hang around with chiropractors and do chiropractic and, uh, and, and get more deep into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, probably maybe two, like, two or three years into practice, I was, I was an associate in Bristol, beautiful practice, really great um, owner, um, all the opportunity in the world. Uh, I wasn't as busy as I'd like to have been. And instead of doubling down and finding out what I could do better where I was, I started looking somewhere else and thought, well, perhaps uh, if I just, we worked in that practice if I took over that I, I did end up taking over a small practice um which was all right but it was just that split instead of uh, you know I wish I'd just doubled down in what I was doing and took advantage of all the knowledge that was there and the opportunities there rather than thinking uh you know things like going quite as I'd like here I think I'll, I'll look over there instead and, and that you know took the grass is greener theory <laughs> yeah you know it's um work on what you can do better rather than look at what can change outside of it it comes back to that inside out thing isn't it it's, mm-hmm. it's really interesting really interesting because that, that, that's the thing is, is sometimes you don't realize and the thing is is that the jobs that are sometimes the best aren't always the ones that pay you the most yeah you know yeah, over in over, over in the states <coughs> chiropractors tend to get paid pretty shoddy from what i understand like um like in the uk chiropractors yeah. get they're yeah. on good terms right anyone that's yeah. in an associateship based business uh they know how much it costs to run associates. Yeah. They cost a lot of money. Uh, you know, so these associates who obviously think that as business owners or as chiropractic business owners, that you know, this guy at the top is raking all this money in. Most of the time, the associate's just about covering the expenses, if that, so that what the chiropractor earns is actually his earnings. Like, and, and a lot of the time, it's not even like that. It's not even as good as that. Because yeah. if it was as good as that, we'd all be really, really happy, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, know, I know there's practices where the associate takes on more than the owner. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't <laughs> surprise like, me. But then that's where, yeah. that's, where the, that's where the percentage of people have kind of got their percentages like muddled yeah. up. Yeah. Like you said, in America, if you look at, I think a lot of the great chiropractors, they often did that internship, didn't they? They just went and worked really hard and learned as much as they could from a great chiropractor. And, so, and sometimes they get paid 20, 30%. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah they, get paid, they get paid peanuts. And, and the thing is, the reason why they take that is because they want to be close to the people. They want to they want to rub shoulders with the successful people. Yeah. And and like you say, sometimes it's uh, you know they're not necessarily paying for it to go and pay to see someone. But um, you know, I, I give up a lot to to be around the right mentors. I give up I give up a lot, and I'm glad I glad I did it early in my career. I'm really glad I did oh, it. Early yeah, in my it's career. an amazing start. I mean, I've. I started doing coaching when I took over the practice only three or four years. And then before that, it was, oh, what can I get? I'll go to the seminar, I'll try and get some free stuff. You know, it's like, just go and get a coach or a mentor and, and double down on what you are doing. Don't switch, don't change, just work through. Obviously, in the long term, you're going to have different coaches and mentors, but I think you just focus, you know, do one thing. And we talk about mentors. <clears throat> By the way, guys, if you are like listening to this as a patient, your chiropractor is essentially your mentor. Like, you know, you should, a lot of the time, if you're trying to live a healthier life, just kind of go and look at what your chiropractor is doing. And and Phil's a great example because, um, you know, he's been, he's been doing his 33 principle challenge. So he's been living by the principles of his work. He's, you know, he's mentally challenging himself. He's progressing. Uh, And look, the thing is, is you might not want to learn 33 principles, but how can you mentally progress yourself in your lifeline? Uh, He's also physically challenging himself as part of his 33 principle challenge. He was doing burpees with it every single day. I mean, there were, and he was teaching something different and new every single day. So he was doing stuff like juggling and stuff, stuff that's going to really require different parts of your brain, different parts of your nervous system. You know, the thing is, he's not just preaching, okay, adjustments are going to solve everything. He's looking at his diet, he's looking at his lifestyle. And, you know, we just sat here for what, half an hour chin wagging about the principles of chiropractic. But the way that you can learn how to live these lives is find a mentor. And we've got both, we've got mentor, I've got multiple mentors, I've got multiple mentors. I've got my business mentor, I've got my, I've got my girlfriend who keeps me in check as far as obviously my behavior. Again, she has to pull me up. So I, I, I use the term mentor loosely with that, but 
you know, you have to ha surround yourself with people that are going to help you to develop. So you don't yeah. just stay stagnant. Of course, yeah, in all things, like having that personal trainer, having someone to talk about nutrition, because obviously um, it all helps. Good stuff. So, um, look, Phil, uh, again, I'm just aware of your time. So I just want, just want to ask the last couple of questions, but I wanted to give you, I wanted to give you an opportunity. So if, if patients or chiropractors wanted to reach out to you, uh, look, by the way, uh, you have two associates. Uh, so we've got two associates in Hawley. Yeah. 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 By the way, if your chiropractor is listening to this, uh, this would be a great gentleman to come and work with. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you guys, you guys run open plan as well, don't you? Uh, so, <clears throat> so the practice I took over in Crawley, I only really took it over because it was open plan and I wanted to challenge myself and, and I'd looked and seen and heard a lot about open plan practice. Mm -hmm. I did work, I worked for a year in Singapore where we had um, two benches. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was, it was a chance to jump in and experience that. Mm -hmm. um, and then in, in Hawley, we're closed room. So we've got, we got both going on. It works quite well at the minute. We might change uh, Hawley to open plan in the future, but at the minute mm -hmm. it's working well. We've got the two associates there. So. Cool. So look, if you guys are looking for work, this guy's a great <laughs> guy to work with. Absolutely brilliant. You'll learn so much from him as well. So look, if people wanted to reach out to you, Phil, how could, how could people do that? Maybe there's like a way of reaching out to you. So uh, I know you're obviously on Facebook, but maybe like there's some emails or some like details, uh, or if it's new patients, mm -hmm. maybe you just direct them to your website. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we, <laughs> the, um, our website, the t practice I took over in Crawley, the website is www.chiropractic-uk.com. Um, so he... Uh, what a great name. <clears throat> and he, the guy was uh, ahead of his time. I think he bought it. He, he set the practice up in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he took that domain. So yeah, well, uh, that's good the man. website there. <clears throat> or my email is philipmitchelldc at gmail.com. Cool. And we'll add that into the descriptions below. So if you guys have got any questions for Phil following on from this episode, that's how we can get in touch with him. When, like I said, we'll just stick that in the, uh, we'll stick that in the descriptions below. So final question, final question. Uh, some words and wisdom or maybe an action that someone can go and take today that you, or a mantra that you live by that you feel like you really would like to share. So, um, one of the one of the things that inspired me a few years ago was a little audio CD by a guy called Zig Ziglar, mm -hmm. uh, an amazing uh, American <clears throat> I don't know what it's business life coach, philosophy coach. But he just talks about the importance of having goals. You know, if you haven't got a goal, if you haven't got a destination, you're a ship floating aimlessly on the ocean. Mm -hmm. So I do think uh, just write down some goals. You know, write down uh, something small, short term something maybe bigger medium term and then maybe write down a big huge crazy goal just give yourself something to focus for um, because that's what's going to pull you forwards every day you know if i hadn't set myself a challenge i don't think i would have done 33 burpees every day mm -hmm, you know so mm -hmm. I, I just think if you just go just especially now at the time i'm sure people are spending a lot of time looking at their life and analyzing their life and mm -hmm. <clears throat> have a look what do you want to do in the next six months what do you want to do in the next 12 months three years 10 years you know what what kind mm -hmm. of things Mm -hmm. And just let your mind run away with you a bit. Just write some stuff down. And mm -hmm. Don't overthink it too much uh, and um, set, set yourself some challenges. Yeah, it's really interesting, actually. I was listening back to one of our um, mentoring uh, ep episodes that we basically did with Dr. Fab Mancini. Oh. <clears throat> what that, a, actually, that was what, that what, was what a guy. To, <coughs> what a guy me to do the uh, burpee challenge really. right I mean, it was it was it was with friends but he kind of said, you know, get your certainty about it. yeah 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 and uh and and he says that the, you know he's got three things that he'll do every single day to 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 guarantee success he makes sure he wakes up early uh he does some form of gratitude when he wakes up first thing in the morning that's what he's going to set his mindset up he's going to set it up to be grateful for the rest of the day then he does exercise those exercises again he wants to change that like routine he wants to get that into his physiology physiology right from the beginning but the third thing he does every day and that's you know this is the really interesting he writes his goals down he doesn't just say them to himself he actually physically yeah. writes them down and he writes them down every single day and he said they might not be necessarily the same ones because you may have achieved some of them but the thing is, is if you're not writing them down you're not you're not necessarily thinking about them you're not actually thinking how can you achieve those so i think look if you guys haven't got any gems from this morning 
I will be eternally shocked because this has been such a great conversation. It's been such a great conversation. There's, there's so much more that we could have spoken about. But again, like I say, I've got to be aware that Phil's, Phil's kids are probably up and ready and ready to go and they're, they're explore, the, road, explore yeah. the garden and go and find the ants again. So <laughs> Homeschool <laughs> time then. <laughs> We're going to do PE with Joe. <laughs> oh, yeah. cool. So it's been super nice to have you on the show with us today, uh, Phil. Again, hopefully we can do this again in the future. I know that we'll catch up again soon. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you. Oh, it's been absolutely my pleasure. It's been absolutely my pleasure. So thank you guys for listening in today. Uh, This is just another episode of Coffee with the Chiropractor with your host, Patrick Hogg. And we hope to hear from you again soon. Take care, Phil. Yes, take care. See you guys.